PG has gone full on communist. These tyrants are enforcing a dress code around our waist with these pink belts of injustice. If we give up our freedoms now, then soon enough we will all be forced into a cat girl lifestyle. So join me in taking a stand to open up pants again. Well, there's already a chaplain on board, but I had the green light to be the second coming. During this period of hardship, innovation is at an all-time high. Though not from a technological standpoint, instead it's a rare change for religion. The church has abandoned their archaic scripture for a weapon will, like the good folks from Waco if they were armed with funny looking swords. You already know that I main chainsaw hand because I'm terrified of disarming. You have to dismember me to take my weapon. Another new feature is the floating text. This is some more good shit that the code monkeys have flung at us. So if the in-game chat didn't already go over your head, then it sure will now. The only negative aspect aspect that I can think of is that you can no longer gain that split second advantage in a fight by making someone look all the way over at the dialogue box. Oh, I almost forgot to introduce my representative for the shift. His name is Brennan Baker. He arrived rationally late to the party because standing around and waiting for something to happen is boring. Upon arriving at the chapel, he was immediately noticed by a dumb clown. The fucker you are not supposed to take seriously told Brennan there was a cult. This fool continued to defy his job description by telling the chaplain what to do. The clown is required to make the station fun, not try to save it. Their conversation then drifted into the topic of the reason behind the pink belts, and all Brennan got was a a bullshit roleplay answer. Well, later on, someone in out of character chat told me the truth behind the propaganda. They explained it's just a temporary placeholder. Yeah, sure. Anyways, the chaplain went into his office and discovered that someone tried to bake the room. Instead of burning the joint down, whoever was responsible gave up after covering the floor with flour. Suddenly his door is being breached by lasers, so he grabbed his trusty baseball bat and then waited to see who was coming to kill him. The shooter was a security officer that came looking for the chaplain. Turns out that dirty clown wasn't joking around. There actually was a cult. Now the chaplain could shine as the station's water boy. While in the brig, Brendan witnessed one of the cult's Aaron demons stealing a spacesuit. Sick! Brendan tried telling security what he saw, but all he cared about was holy water, so he blessed the water tank as instructed. Personally, I still don't know if this actually produces holy water. I always thought you had to bless individual cups filled with life juice. Even after Brendan complied, this one stupid motherfucker was still talking shit. This led to a couple of chainsaw pats on the back from the retarded chaplain. The guy was asking for it, but of course he started playing victim. Brennan tried to evade the situation. Unfortunately, he was caught and thrown into a cell. These pricks wouldn't leave him alone. Where's you Bible, chap? For some reason, the chaplain's Bible was a ghost, completely invisible to mortals. The bullies had taken his backpack and thrown it down the hall. Whoever did take it didn't steal anything, not even the concealed good book. Next, Brennan got caught in the crossfire of a flamethrower attack. Luckily, he remembered how to be cool about fire safety. Stop. The flamer then got smeared by those he burnt. Remember folks, fire is an infectious disease that you shouldn't try and spread. Brendan wound up being the new carrier of the flamethrower when it was all said and done. He tried using his weapon of ash production to melt a space barnacle. However, it's not a flamethrower didn't come with fuel. His attempt at extreme hunting got him pinched into an incapacitated state. Luckily, the spearman was there to save the chaplain's fleshy spirit. Boxed in safety for all would soon be provided because the emergency shuttle was on the way, but a reinforced obstacle blocked the path. Presumably, the cult had walled off the refugees' escape. Nevertheless, a cybernetic bear led the siege through the security outpost. Right before the shuttle arrived, Brennan saw a decent brawl going on in space. The combatants almost got crushed by the warp speed train. In this moment, Brendan could relax since he stumbled upon his favorite gun. He shot it only a couple of times before getting dropped. The remainder of his day was spent being blacked out while mounting a space carp. Brendan survived and became a bartender in his next shift. The first thing he did was try to find a way to bring in customers. Does anyone want to turn the dining area of the bar into a stage? I want to host an open mic rap battle. Cringe? No, it's for real. Not cringe. His plan had worked. He already had his first patron. Ahoy, matey! Are you here for the rap battle? No! Just a good drink! Sorry. We only rap here. No drinks unless you can rap. Seriously? Yes. Well, it seems the station was dealing with issues far more important than rap. Regardless, the bartender continued to try and draw a crowd to his bar despite everything going on, like businesses refusing to kneel to coronavirus. This new idea he had was simply hosting fights. People love violence. In fact, this trap-looking bitch was so excited he killed himself in front of Brendan. 
Of course some board board wanted the body for medical reasons. This argument alone caused a lag spike so vicious that it popped the server's tires, thus causing a crash. Alright, I'm gonna go to a place where my gimmicks might not be accepted, but people will at least sort of play along since they have nothing better to do. Here, I'm going to embody a man named Brad Bash. I gave all the juicy detail that I could when describing Brad's body parts. I even dropped a nonsensical paragraph for how he looks naked. How many nuts you might bust? One? <laughs> the end result was similar to my scripts in a sense because it reads like some weird edgy poetry. I'm tall and I stand before you. I look down on those who are short and don't have red hair like mine. If you get in my way, we will have to fight. But don't worry, I'm not very strong. His large head stands before you looking like those stones on that island. Ugly. Green and dangerous. Small and cute. OOC. Down for anything your heart desires. Brad tried to fit in with the roleplay community. Brad Bash, take a seat. It seemed to work since he already had an admirer. Motherfucker! What? You look hot. Oh shit. Thanks. Then Brad wanted some alone time with the mentally handicapped. Hosting therapy session in the bathroom. Please think about what you just said. Therapy? You sure it's therapy? First, it's my job. Second, tell the truth. Don't worry, I think before I talk. It's the best place to have therapy. It's private and quiet. You all are sick. My office is also quiet and private. Don't go to the bathrooms for mental help. You aren't even qualified. Trust me, I am. Someone sounds scared of some competition. I read their file. They don't have any qualifications. I doubt you. Can you even do this? How's that therapy? It helps with some things that talking doesn't. So you have come to seeking my help. What is the problem? I didn't come for help. I came to tell you to not offer knockoff services in places that are in a possible sexual setting. Good day. The bathroom is a place for talking and shitting. I don't see what is sexual about it. Then you are a child. Morgan had a rough childhood. She just told me about it. Really gross. Did I even have one? I guess my job is done for the day. Time for a beer. Brad's bathroom therapy sessions had people confused. They thought he was a predator, when really he was just trying to provide the help they desperately needed. Shortly thereafter, he was amazed and a little turned on by this giant turd bug that was stiffly slithering through the halls. Then Mr. Bash ran into some beef. Brad Bash stands with his arms crossed, looking like a therapist. His role playing caused this furry to act out of character with these aggressive shoves. Come on, role player pushes at least. Nice low RP. I tried to RP it. Later, Brad discovered that the station allows you to eat as much as you want. Also, with the fork, you can eat something in one or two bites. Without utensils, the grub lasts a lot longer. So clearly, if we all started eating with our hands instead of forks, we could solve world hunger. Then finally, he got some hot ERP from that horny dude from earlier. After being violated with a bar of soap, Brad went right back to eating sushi. Back in his bathroom office, he had two kinky patients searching for answers. Welcome to my office. No! Is this a group therapy sessions? I do couples. No. Since Brad believed those two lost souls were in denial, he followed them. The couple asked Brad to leave, but he cared too much about their mental state, so he stayed. Which caused the sexual insect monster to grab Brad and crush him. There was nothing he could do. This brute had a tile of height on him along with the strength of an army of ants. I was banished from their fun zone for pissing in their ball pit. Which is unreasonable since I roleplayed everything I did. That heavy RP... Sorry. That heavy RP... That heavy RP server had a guidance counselor role. Which makes sense for all the traumatizing shit going down there. But why does TG have a psychologist? Oh well, Brendan Baker's still alive and now he's gonna help people's brains. Okay, I get it. A psychologist is really a drug dealer. Nice hot take you got there. Mental illness is actually serious and cannot be joked about at all. Anyways, Dr. Baker started his day off by watching a schizophrenic mosh pit happen in the kitchen. Brendan was actually attempting to do his job by trying to make the fighters work out their problems with words. However, this lawyer wanted the pit to keep on moshing probably because he saw the potential lawsuits that could come from this event. So he tossed Brennan right into the mayhem. The pacifist tried running away, but the violence quickly seduced him. At first, he respectfully shoved a couple of people. Eventually, he threw a spear at someone, which is the equivalent of some dick throwing elbows in a civilized mosh pit. After that, he politely opted out of the bedlam in the kitchen. Brennan had realized that no one wanted a prescription for his crazy pills, which meant he had to take them all. 
otherwise they would expire and go to waste. His theory led to a bender where he popped mindbreaker pills and washed it down with booze. One of the best activities to do on drugs and alcohol is steal other people's possessions, and the command center was wide open. Though just like a crackhead he ignored all the fancy supercomputers and stole something shiny instead, a wrench. Brendan thought his career and feelings was over. But all the captain wanted to do was implant them since there may have been revolutionaries aboard. He then went back to medbay and tried defusing an argument between a security officer and the chef. Their gripe was over a gun. You know if we banned all firearms on the station then this wouldn't be an issue. The mediocre psychologist finally got to drug someone. His case study was a monk that had never left the sober realm before. Which is why he started shouting, I'm on drugs, as he paced around on top of a table. Then what I assume was a revolutionary breach of security gave Brennan the opportunity to steal a couple of guns. Better safe than sorry. Insert transitional phrase here. No amount of preparation could prepare him for another almighty crash. Brennan had another chance at life, and he chose to be a botanist. Although he didn't have to plant anything since his partner was already growing errors like an unexpected triplet pregnancy. Meanwhile, the head of personnel was offering all access for 10 pairs of shoes. Of course chaos ensued. There was already a large crowd gathering and the clown was threatening everybody with a welding tool and a fuel tank. Brendan tried to be a hero by dragging the fuel tank to safety, but he gave up after losing his grip in this hallway cliffhanger. Security tried their best to control the riot with flashbangs. Majority of the people were banged by the flash, yet some were unaffected including this lawyer that triggered the explosive that was looming amongst them. This confusing predicament was made worse by the fact that a large portion of the station was now named John Doe, thus signing everybody's death certificate into obscurity. Brendan lost one of his legs in that explosion, and got it replaced with a cybernetic limb. Thank goodness for universal robotic care. His next move was a selfish one. He stole the all-access machine's login password. The armory is the first place you must go when you gain that captain privilege. All the other accessors had the same idea, which is why there was barely any weapons left. Brennan never forgot where he came from. Truly, he wanted to protect his hood by providing his fellow botanist with a shotgun. On the inside and out, he was still hurting. The pain only got worse when he got caught in another explosion. The botanist lost yet another limb he couldn't grow back. He marched to the robotics department with his detached arm and hand like the soldier from Saving Private Ryan. He threw his limb and left because he didn't have time for the waiting list. He'd rather spend it watching live police brutality and making heartfelt announcements. Brendan then found the captain and asked him if he had a plan to deal with the collapsing station. He received the best answer, no plan. The captain should always wing it. Flames almost engulfed the head of security. Wisely, he chose cold space over too much heat. Yeah, things may have been bad, but they were not emergency shuttle bad. So Brennan felt recalling the shuttle was necessary. Slowly dying was Karma's way of saying he shouldn't have done that. Though he got a second chance thanks to these kind fellas. Only to die a harsh, low RP death. I guess let's give that heavy ship one last chance. Here we are as Joseph Fat Wibble. I've noticed for most servers, female is the default gender. I suppose it's in order to entice guys to pick it. Oh no, what does this mean? Ah oh, yes, I've been here before. I wrote Joseph Fat a solid character description that would raise no eyebrows, but rather lower tongues. He started off by taking the light speed arrival shuttle through the membrane dance floor plane. Well, this character did nothing since he arrived soon as everybody was leaving. Now he could sit back and enjoy the most boringly peaceful emergency shuttle in all of space. I don't want to be a Sit down on the chair and pull down on the jump seat. There's a mighty storm on the horizon, one I have which I have never seen. Oh, I'm very scared. I don't think I'll be able to make it home. Oi! Oh, 